Hi, this is Professor Stugard, and in this video we're going to discuss how to use a workflow object in the R programming language. So our goals for this lecture, we're really just going to talk about what a workflow object is and why using one kind of helps build our models in R um, and how we kind of can piece together all the different parts of our model kind of one step at a time. And it really, what it does is it allows us to avoid having to pipe and pipe and pipe and pipe. And again, lets us do things kind of one step at a time and really keep track of what we're doing. Um, so we're also gonna learn how we can build a model using that workflow object. So again, so far we've used the term model. What we really mean is some sort of structural equation that relates predictors to an outcome. Now, to help manage our model creation, this is why we use a workflow object. Now, for workflow objects, what we want to do is, first of all, define our model, what kind of model we want to do, like a linear regression, logistic regression, that sort of thing. We also want to define our formula, which really is just defining what should our response variable be, and then what are our, our explanatory variables going to be that kind of hopefully explain what the the response one, right? Those would be our predictor variables to the explanatory ones. And then the final thing we do is we fit the data to the workflow and that gives us our model. And again, the nice part about the workflow object is that it lets us do each of these steps one at a time and make sure that, well, it's really set up the way we want it to be. So first of all, to create a workflow, well, we just use the workflow function. So let's say I'm creating a workflow called my workflow or my underscore WF. Um, and I run that code, it's going to create an object for my workflow. If I investigate this workflow object in my console, what's going to pop up is, well, here's a workflow, the preprocessor none, model none. So we haven't done any of this part yet. We haven't set our model and we haven't set our formula yet that defines our variable. So the preprocessor is really just defining what our variables are going to be, how our formula should be set up in terms of uh, explanatory and response. So. Well, the first thing we should do is create a new object with the type of model we want to use. So again, this is a really nice idea too, that we can create our model as its own object. And so we've talked about these two types of models, and of course there's many other ones, uh, but we've done linear regressions and logistic regressions. And so when we create these uh, different types of regressions, we can absolutely store these as their own separate objects. And again, this has nothing to do with the data, um, or the variables that we're going to use, we can create these every single time so that they're kind of ready to use um, for whatever type of modeling we want to do. And so, again, it could be a good idea if we don't know which model is going to be best to create a couple of these. So a linear regression, a logistic regression, uh, maybe a random forest model or a Bayesian model, or again, there, there's a number of other types of models we can create. Now, again, I am naming these as for linear regression, LR spec, because these are really the model specifications. So for the model I'm going to use, these are the specifications. So for a linear regression model, my specifications will be, well, a linear regression, where, again, I have to pipe that into the set engine function. And for a linear regression, I'm going to set my engine as LM for linear model. For a logistic regression, on the right-hand side there, um, again, that is a generalized linear model, so a GLM, and again, I'm going to store that as its own object, GLM spec. I'm going to pipe in my logistic regression to the set engine function, and again, for the logistic regression, I'm setting my engine as GLM for the generalized linear model. Now, let's say, for example, that I want to um, take my model that I just created, my specifications, so again, the GLM, so the logistic regression one that I just had, now I'm going to do that separately. I store that as my object, GLM spec, for my specifications. If I call that in my console, my output now is going to be, well, this is a logistic regression model, specification classification, meaning that, again, what we're doing is a classification uh, type of model, and the computational engine is going to be my GLM, or generalized linear model. So it's keeping track of all that. Now I can add that model to my workflow with the pipe and the add model function. So again, I'm starting with my workflow, which was empty, basically. So I'm going to take my workflow, which is empty, my WF, pipe, or store it back in my WF. So again, overwrite it. And what I'm going to do is again, pipe the, my workflow into the add model function. And I'm going to add that model we just created, which is my GLM spec. Now, if I investigate and decide to inspect my workflow in the console, 
my result is going to be my workflow. So my preprocessor is still none. I haven't done that part yet, but I have added my model and my model is now my logistic regression model using the computational engine of GLM. So yeah, we can see how the pieces start to fit in here. So well, now that we did the model part, now we have to do the preprocessor part, which is also called creating a formula. So the formula defines our preprocessor, which is what our response variable should be and what our explanatory and predictor variable should be. And we're going to add this to our workflow with a pipe and the function, well, add formula. Now, the way we're going to do this is, again, overwrite the original workflow. When we pipe it into add formula, we are going to do that tilde type idea, where it's response, tilde, and then my explanatory variable. So it might be one explanatory variable, or it might be three explanatory variables like I have here. However many explanatory variables you want to use as your predictors, and again, sometimes it is useful to use multiple predictors, um, we're going to include all of those in that add formula function. All right. Now, if we wish to consider all of the potential variable, all of our variables as potential explanatory variables or potential uh, predictors, that's where we use the, the period, the, the dot there. So if I want to just say, basically throw it all at the wall and see what sticks, I would use the, uh, the dot there. So again, we still have the response. I still want the one that I want to be able to predict, the tilde, and then we would have the dot for all of them. And so again, typically that's not really your response variable, right? I'm just kind of putting a placeholder in there for your response variable. Um, and typically it's not actually called R-E-S-P. But it'd be something like height or weight or date or, or one, whatever variable it is for that particular data set that we would use. All right, so now the last step is to create our fit. And once we create our fit, uh, this actually makes our model and we're no longer really in our workflow object. Um, once we fit our data, we have the results of our model. It's going to tell us how well our model did at making the predictions. And it might be good, it might be bad. We might want to try different models. But again, the nice part is that workflow object stored all that information, we can overwrite the model and try a new one and again, do the fit with the same data. So the way we're gonna do this is, well, with the fit function. Now again, we are creating a model at this point and we want the results of our model. So it's no longer a workflow object. So I am going to sort in a new object and called model or results or, or something along those lines. And again, we're going to pipe it into the fit function and then we pipe in our training data. Now, if we did a set of bootstrap resamples because our data set wasn't big enough, I would actually say I'm fitting my resamples. And it's a little bit more complicated uh, in terms of the actual code, but it's the same basic idea. We would now fit our resamples to our boot data. And what we typically want to do, uh, at least in the beginning, before, um, when we're trying to understand what's going on, is we want to set some control uh, options as well. And so I want to uh, basically control my resamples. I want to save the predictions from each set of the resamples. I don't just want necessarily the end result. It would be nice to see them all one at a time. And then also verbose equals true, meaning it's going to give me more data. Um, it's not going to hide it all. And then I've run my model and that's it. And I have my results. I can see how well it did. And if it did well, great. We're going to move on to, again, we would use some other functions to, to check the predictions and and that sort of stuff as well on the model. Um, but again, the purpose of this video is really just to set up a, a workflow for, again, kind of organizing all of our information so we can create our particular models. All right, so that wraps it up for this one. So the two main questions, how do you create a workflow object? And then what are the two things that need to be defined before we try to fit the data? All right. Well, I hope this was informative, and as always, take care of yourselves.